creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Welcome to Creative Living Today. We're going to learn how to convert a Roman shade to make it compliant to the new rules, and we'll discuss how to optimize our nutrition. One of my guests is Terrell Sunderman, and she's going to begin by giving a brief overview of the latest Roman shade safety standards. Then she'll show how to convert an existing Roman shade to make it safety compliant. And keep in mind that these changes only pertain to someone who sews for others. Terrell's business is Terrell Designs, and she's from Castle Rock, Colorado. We'll begin the show with Louis Dordempri, who is a spiritual master. Louis is going to talk about optimizing nutrition, and he stresses that moderation and temperance are much more successful than obsessive compulsive diets. He's the founder and president of the Louis Dordempri Foundation in Laguna Hills, California. Louie, it's so nice to have you here on, on the show. I've, I've enjoyed talking to you before we um, sat down here. And uh, you certainly have had an interesting life and continue to have an interesting right. life. I was not aware of what a spiritual master was and what, what your job involved, but I, I did want to talk to you about nutrition because that surprised me that that was uh, an integral part of, of the life you live and the, the workshops and things that you do. Mm. We all know fad diets aren't good for us, but yeah. uh, how do you feel about the way people should eat, moderation, temperance? How do, how do you feel about that? Well, um, personally for myself and how I teach, I, I'm, I like to create, help people create, first of all, something that is attainable and doable. And so in that regard, I tend to, I'll, I'll bring forth a body of knowledge, a body of teaching on any given subject, but I always want to make it something that, that people can, can latch onto and find success in. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, I, I, tend pe I tend to tell people that don't necessarily push yourself to be fanatic or so meticulous about it that that you set yourself up to fail. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I like to create something you can work with that that's that's doable. And in terms of eating, um, <clears throat> I don't know there's so many directions we can go with it. I mean. Uh, so when people come to a workshop, you, I like the fact that you say you do it in, in slowly. They don't have to go home and throw out all the sugar and all the flour and everything that's white. But that right. is an issue that you talk about. Yeah, I give them I give them goals to work toward. Like for instance, um, for instance, like um, one of the foods that um, I give people categories, and I mm -hmm. say here are categories that you should strive to. I use words like strive to and uh -huh. begin to develop to lean away from, Be move aware away from. Of, yeah, uh -huh. like, um, you know, to decrease the use of what nutritionists often call white death, white I sugar, white flour. I have not heard it called that. Yeah. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> white sugar, white flour, white, white rice. Uh -huh. Because what happens is um, if you, are you familiar with kinesiology, muscle testing? Yes. Uh -huh. If you put like a packet of white sugar on your chest and you go to muscle test, your entire body goes weak. You, oh. can't, you can't get a positive response in any muscle in your whole body. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's very, very toxic uh -huh. to the body. So I tell people, you know, start to steer away from refined sugar and mm -hmm. go into natural sweeteners. And there are so many of them that have many different flavors and they're not any more expensive. Mm -hmm. So people can make changes and they can make them gradually without feeling they have to be fanatic fanatical about it. Mm -hmm. and Those are, that's the white death, the, the items that you talked about. Yeah. What about just junk foods, processed foods? Junk foods. That's hard to, to give up. Well, again, that's why I tell people start reducing them. And mm -hmm. I give people general guidelines about nutrition that are not about specific foods too. Like for instance, um, <clears throat> it's much healthier to eat smaller and smaller portions more times throughout the day. It's, uh -huh. it's healthier to have a little snack of something than to have three giant meals. And we grow up, my generation, your generation, mm -hmm. eat three huge meals, uh -huh. get your body fuel, stock up in the morning. That's mm -hmm. the worst thing for your body. It's best for when you feel a little bit of hunger, you have a little bit of food and you process it. Because if you think about your stomach, your stomach is this, this uh, sack that expands. And when you fill it to capacity and expand it, it, it has elasticity. And if you keep pushing it and pushing it, it will stay larger and then it will take more food to feel full. I and then see. what happens is you'll fill it to capacity and you keep increasing it, it and that makes you start to grow. So I that's see. one of the fundamentals of 
of good nutrition is reducing the amount you eat. How long does it take uh, the body, the stomach, to, to start shrinking if you're cutting back on eating the three big meals? Oh, it's just... immediate. Is it really? It's immediate. Oh, yeah, like within uh -huh. a day or two, you'd see a difference. Uh -huh. Let's say conservatively a week, you would start to really feel a difference. But if you're very sensitive to, to foods and you're really in tune with your body, you'd feel it within a couple of days. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, for instance, I do a lot of fasting, and I teach people how to fast as well. And, and I often, there are one-day fasts and three-day fasts, and a good, a strong fast is about seven to ten days for... Yeah. Some people do really, really long ones. Like I've done 21s, and last year, I, two years ago, I did my first 40-day fast without food. But, um, but on a 7- to 10-day fast, when you have that first meal, you can only eat a little handful of food. I mean, you physically can't get it in because mm -hmm. your stomach has shrunk. Shrunk so much. And your, your palate has changed, and your taste for food has changed. And mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, a, that's a, a huge and egregious example. But the principle is the same. When you start eating less, your stomach will naturally shrink. So that's one fundamental, a core uh -huh. principle of optimal nutrition. Another one is not eating late at night. I mm -hmm. often tell people don't have a major meal after six or seven if you can help it. Right. But again, back to the don't be fanatical. Uh -huh. If your friend, your cousin, your sister's in town and you're going out to a big restaurant say, oh, I can't eat after uh -huh. six, we're not going out, tell all the kids, sorry, I can't see them. Yeah. You go out and you enjoy yourself and don't mm -hmm. feel guilty about it. But as a way of life, strive to have your last meal by late afternoon and then just have something light in the evening like fruits or something mm -hmm. that you can digest, fruit digest in under an hour. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh -huh. things like that. And in the morning, you know, I always have fruit in the morning, with the exception of this morning here in New Mexico. <laughs> I want to have a country, country breakfast. But um, I have fruit in the morning almost every day of my life. Your body, you've slept for six to eight hours, so your body's dehydrated. Mm -hmm. And fruit is 90 to 100 percent water, so you hydrate your body and you get all your vitamins and minerals. Your morning is also your elimination period when your body flushes out. So you're flushing your body with water, you're getting structured water, you're getting vitamins, minerals, hydration and you're assisting the elimination, the cleaning out of your body, you feel amazing. A lot of people say, well, I don't feel sourced if I don't, if I don't have a big, heavy breakfast. Uh -huh. but, a lot of, but then what, am almost every, what does almost everyone have after the big, heavy breakfast? Several cups of coffee. Uh -huh. Because the big, heavy breakfast actually shuts you down and makes you tired. I see. Because so we're defeating the purpose of starting yeah. the day with a good breakfast. Well, or good is relative. Right. I mean, a, a well, bowl full of fruit is great. And then if you, and again, you have to temper it to what your tastes and customs and, and, and preferences are. There's some people say, well, I need a good breakfast. So I'll tell them, okay, then get up in the morning and have your fruit. And then an hour later, then have your eggs and toast and pancakes, mm -hmm. waffles, whatever you want. But give your body the gift of getting rehydrated and flushing out and you'll feel so much better. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious about, you mentioned the fasting. Is that simply to get rid of toxins and poisons in the body? Is that the purpose of fasting? Um, there are many, many purposes. That is one of the primaries. Uh -huh. There are certain toxins that get, that get held or trapped in the body that cannot be removed by any other means but fasting. And a lot of people don't know that. No. Um, but fasting also is really good, and not necessarily on a large basis, like a 7 to 10 day, but I have a, a, a practice and a principle I share with people about taking one day a week just to fast because what happens is it helps you regulate your appetite. Because remember how I talked about when you eat more, your mm -hmm. stomach expands? But also psychologically and emotionally, when you eat more, you want more. Oh, and yeah. this addiction type behavior starts growing. And when you fast every now and then, even if it's one day, you're, you keep your palate and your appetite in check and you don't, it, it breaks that tendency to keep building, 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 and that addiction to food keeps it in check, and it helps offset that. So it's very healthy in that way as well. Well, that makes sense. But, you know, if you've never fasted before, I know when I miss a meal or two, I'm really hungry. And yeah. I just think, oh, I've got to eat. Some, I remember I'll, when I'll I pass did, out. I remember when I did my 40-day fast. I, I live on the opposite side of the country from my parents, and, and we met. They're in Boston. I'm in California. And we met down in Florida. And at that time, I, had, I hadn't eaten for 18 days. And my mom and dad took me out to this gorgeous Italian restaurant where they served food on uh -huh. these huge platters, those uh -huh. mountains of food. Uh -huh. And my dad said, I feel so bad, I've eaten in front of you. And he said, he says, how long have you not eaten? He's, and I said, 18 days. And he said, I can't go 18 minutes without eating. <laughs> and that's what most people say to I, me. I agree with him. But again, when you said people who've never fasted, once again, I would temper that if I gave someone a fast, I would look at their diet, I would look at their nutrition, look at their life habits and tailor it to what works for them. Like I, I know one, I have one friend who's very, very, I'll use the word addicted to food and eats a lot of it. And 
And this um, individual said, ah, there's no way I could mm -hmm. fast. I just, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to, and if you tell me, then I'm not going to talk to you. Yeah. And I said, then, then make an effort in that direction. Let's say your fast could be, I'll only eat fruits and fruit juices for a day. Because then you're still helping your body in some way, rather than no food or just water. So, there's so different when you types fast, of fast, you can't have water? Yeah, you, well, there are many different types of fast. Oh, some people yeah. have water only. Some people do the, what's called a master cleanse, which is lemon juice and a little maple syrup and cayenne pepper and a glass of water. Uh -huh. Some people just drink that because then you, ha you still have a glucose stream going into your body and they don't get, uh, your sugar levels get maintained. You know, and then you have people who have hypo and hyperglycemia, mm -hmm. so they have to, you have to moderate fast for I different see. people. Yeah, I thought fast was fast. I didn't a lot of people do. That. They think it means mm -hmm. no food. Uh -huh. um, but there are different types you can do. Mm -hmm. And some people will say, oh, I'll just give up meat or I'll give up, I'll just do fruit and vegetables because that's very light food. And then they'll feel a huge difference in their body. I see. Well, you mentioned fruits and vegetables. Um, are you a proponent of vegans eating just um, the I eliminating do teach, meat? I do teach vegan living and veganism. And, and my ashrams, my centers around the world are all completely vegan. Um, I'm not 100% right now in my life. I went through some changes in, in different ways. I don't want to get into the story of it all. But, but I'm mostly vegan. Uh -huh. I, and um, I'm also, I eat at least, I teach raw um, living too. So about 70 to 80 percent of my food is fruits and vegetables and at least 50 percent of what I eat is raw because the raw food you get your structured water, you get your live enzymes and your nutrients in their purest form and when you eat live raw food and mostly organic you, you need way less food and you have way more energy and you need way less sleep. So it's really synergizing. It's so interesting. It's very very uh -huh. fascinating. It's, uh -huh. it's amazing how much less sleep you need and how much less food you need because this is also one of the reasons why people eat a lot of food because your brain is saying, I haven't been fed. Because mm -hmm. if you've oh, killed yeah. all your food, you've killed all the nutrients in it. And you cook it to death and, and you've killed all the nutrients. And you're so, just filling up. So you're eating volume, is. but your brain is still saying, I haven't been nourished yet. Uh -huh. So it, that's why people want to eat more and more and more. And then they say, now I feel full. But if you're, eat, if you're eating more and more live food, fresh fruits and vegetables, you don't need as much food, and you'll feel the energy. You'll feel you'll it. You'll really, really feel it. You've inspired so. me. This is very interesting. <laughs> so, there, so there are little steps you can make. Like, for instance, I know we're in a big dairy and cattle industry, region here, so I don't want to offend anyone. But again, um, people say, well, I'll never give up meat. And then I say to them, well, you could give up meat maybe one day a week. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, and think. Moderation. Yeah, so you, mm -hmm. could, you can make changes that, that help the earth and help yourself, help your body help animals, you know, more animals will live, and there are things you can do. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. Uh -huh. that and makes and sense. I find that that ingratiates more people into making changes in their lives when they don't feel like, I could never do that, uh -huh. or I would never want to do that. Then that people sets say, you up for failure. It does, and then you get irritated, and then you resent the person offering the help. So I say, well, let's, let's find a happy medium here. Uh -huh. And then people feel like they get a leg up, and they say, I feel some success in this. I'm making a contribution. I'm improving my way of life. And yet, I don't feel like I've made such huge sacrifices uh -huh. that I have to be miserable to be healthy. Right. Yeah, you know? yeah. And Life's then what happens short, is, as they say. exactly. And then when you start having these little successes, the the inspiration grows inside oneself to increase. And you don't have to be pushed or coerced or do some fanatical fad diet that's mm -hmm. only going to put you in the hospital anyway. Mm -hmm. Or or if it doesn't, you're going to gain back everything uh -huh. you, you've lost. And so many people do that <laughs> yo-yo dieting. Oh uh -huh. yeah, you'll lose twenty or thirty, and then gain forty, 40. six mm -hmm. months later. And, well, thank you so much for sharing this. It's really inspiring. I appreciate getting oh. to talk to you today. Oh, you're welcome. There's so much more. It's a big subject. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> Terrell, thank you so much for coming. And it's been a while since you were here, and I understand there's been lots of changes in your area of expertise. That's right. I've been making Roman shades for 33 years now, and the last 17 I've done them as a full-time business, which means I make shades and sell them to people. Uh -huh. And uh, the window manufacturer, the window coverings manufacturing association, uh, has been very active uh, since 1996, uh, looking at safety issues for corded window treatments. Oh, mm -hmm. And of course, a Roman shade is a corded window treatment. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I can show you this small sample here, a Roman shade is uh, a very simple window treatment. It's a panel of Pulls fabric up and folds. with a with a pull mm -hmm. cord. And if you look at the back, uh, it's uh, 
you know, rings that pull mm -hmm. up. And, and the, um, the, there's quite a space between these rings. Right, mm -hmm. right. And uh, the, in the past, if you made a Roman shade this way, the only thing you were concerned about was the operating cord mm -hmm. because the, the shade had to be safe when the, when the shade when was down. Uh -huh. Okay, this last revision of the safety standards um, also said that uh, what they were doing is keeping track of of safety possible strangulations of children and they oh. found that they had pretty much solved the problem with the front cord uh -huh. but now uh, they were having instances of not in this yeah. case this is a hoop mm -hmm. of a child climbing behind the oh. shade when it was down and if you can see this like is this, child. Is about, this is mm -hmm. our child yes the head the, the head same. could come in and mm -hmm possibly be strangled or or get I hurt. See. Uh -huh. So the industry decided they had to do something with the back cords. Okay? So the latest standard um, did three things. It it reiterated what you did with the front cords and these front cords are braided. Oh, okay. no chance of and getting it, no uh -huh. chance of getting hurt when it's when the shade is down. And we'll talk about this little tag. We'll that's talk about off. the tag. Mm -hmm. Yes. The second thing they did is that I'll show you another sample. But there's actually a, a second device here called a cord shroud. And you have to look real careful because I kept asking you when I looked at this, I couldn't even see it. Yes, and we'll it's show a you. Filament, right. And like what it is is that it could be anything that encases the lift cord. Mm -hmm. So the cord, the shade can still pull up, uh -huh. and in this case, uh, the shroud gathers. and the cord uh -huh. are the same color as the lining, so it's not very visible from the back. Uh -huh. But if we let this down, we can see that the monkey cannot, because it's attached to the cord. Mm -hmm. You can't get through You there. cannot Has uh, no create a there. hazardous uh -huh. thing. And I the see. third thing that they did was um, so that um, uh, the person that bought the shade, knew you are you need you require this is upside down, mm -hmm. but this is my name. It says Terrell Designs, uh, December 2010, and uh, Castle Rock, Colorado. And you're required to okay, put you're that required on. Required to put mm -hmm. on that with permanent with permanent marker. marker. Uh -huh. oh, okay. okay. Now I guess the question is, you know, who should be concerned about making right. If a I shade, make a shade, do I have to comply with all of if this? If you want to put it in your own house, you do not. Okay. If you sell this to a friend, a neighbor, or you have a small sewing business in your house, uh -huh. uh, you're required to make the oh. shades. Uh, if you make a shade with a cord on the back, it has to be enclosed in a cord shroud. And you can kind of see the shroud better here That's because right. you've used a contrasting That's colored right. cord. Okay. So, and it has to be, the spacing of the rings have to be less than eight inches. Oh, and those okay. others were about that's eight right. inches, right. That's right. Uh -huh. um, the other thing that's changed with the standards is they used to tell you how you could make a shade. Oh. And now you have to either use a, a proven method or you have to make a shade and send it off and have it tested. Which is quite expensive. A, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, which is, it's a, it's a couple hundred dollars depending on what you have tested. Uh -huh. So it's, the, the standards have defined how to identify a possible hazardous loop and um, and then how to show that it will not present a strangulation I see. incident. Well, that's and that shade I showed you, the, the flowered one, uh -huh. was tested by an independent consumer products lab and it passed the and test. It passed. Okay. You were talking about the shroud and we uh -huh. did show this one, which yep. is kind of a tube that the that's cord right. runs through. Mm -hmm. This is all in one piece. This is, yeah, that's correct. This, this comes with the cord in it. Uh -huh. And when it pulls up, though, it's a little more visible because it ruffles up mm -hmm. on the back. And the simplest is the, 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 the loops. And you and have they, to hand thread this that's through right. it. So that's like right. And they're close uh -huh. enough together that you cannot pull the pull cord out independently. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's okay. interesting. Now, as far as the lift cords go, uh, I actually have not had to change the way I do the cord, uh, with the exception of you do you if you sell this or even if you give it to a family, you know, a daughter-in-law or something, a friend, mm -hmm. is that you do want to deliver it with a warning tag. And this should be on the pull cord. It's on the pull cord, mm -hmm. and it's like your pillow 
when you when when the minute you leave, having put the shade up on the window, the consumer it will off. take it off. And okay? what does the cord say? Just it that just it says that with... that uh, when you pull the shade up, that there is a loop here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and oh, to keep this out of the way of children. Mm -hmm. Now I use a cord cleat and I pull it, but it has to be way up high. And you're not supposed to put cribs in children's mm -hmm. furniture and stuff where they can get at the cords. But what if, uh, I, in lots of homes, especially the two-story, maybe there'll be a, a window 25 feet up. Do you still have to make, you have do. to comply with this? You even do. though children may never, will never be up there? That's correct. Oh. That's correct. Okay. So the, the standards say that they, you, you cannot know, um, you cannot assume that it's going yeah. to be in a location where a problem won't happen. That's interesting. Okay. Another way to do that, so that's one cord. Another way to do it would be to have independent cords, okay, two tassels. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a similar label, but it's actually a different label. Uh -huh. uh, this has a knot on the top, oh. so this one forms a loop. Okay. The very safest way for the pull cords is to have totally separate cords. Oh. Uh, now, if there's and only two loose cords, they're on loose. They're loose on uh -huh. this end. Um, you could never ever form a loop because there's no knot at the top. Mm -hmm. It okay? just would pull all the way yeah, through. Yeah, but the problem uh -huh. is, if it was a wide shade, you would have to pull each one oh. separately yeah. and try to level. So I like to use a knot. I think so. Too. Okay. So what is not allowed is, let's say that I braid my cord, mm -hmm. but I start the knot way down low. So this cord connector, which is a knot, mm -hmm. um, has inches. to be within mm -hmm. three inches of the top. Oh. So this is not considered compliant with the new I standards. See. <coughs> because when you pull it, then we get a, a really, lot really of, big. A big loop. Right. I see. Right. Okay. And this is similar where I have the two separate tassels, but the knot's way up too high. Hmm. And this is something that may be already in your house. These are totally separate two cords, one condenser. And that's this what is I easy. have, unfortunately. That's right. Mm -hmm. This is easy to fix. You either cut them and put two things, or you can take this out and braid the cords. Oh, okay. So just untie the knot and then braid the cord, and it would, that's it right. would be considered safe. That's right. And then, the, like I said, the last thing is if you were um, in the back cords are shrouded, mm -hmm. okay, and the spacing is close together. And this is braided. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And then if we look at this shade here, we can see that this shade has two tags. It has one on the pull cord. Oh, uh -huh. And there's one on the bottom. And this is a different tag. This is a different, oh, this so one here. you have to have two. Right, it, and Spanish mm -hmm. on one side, English on the other. Mm -hmm. And it says this product contains accessible cords on the back. Okay, and it keeps children mm -hmm. away, even though okay. they cannot strangle themselves, they still might get caught or you might be concerned about animals. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Okay. And then uh -huh. the third label is the, it's called a product origin label, mm -hmm. which is, which is name. the name, the name and the, uh, the date of manufacture. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's it's great to know that you all are are up to date and, mm -hmm. and always trying to make window treatments safe because yes. that's our top concern, other right. than them being beautiful and add to uh -huh. the to the beauty of our homes. Well, yes. thank you so much for bringing us up to date on thank this. You. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to decorate cupcakes and other small treats. We'll show you how to make perfect party favors and discuss figs and nutrition. One of my next guests is going to share some of the various techniques students learn when they take course number one in a Wilton cake decorating class. She'll also demonstrate some new techniques for cupcakes and other small treats. Another guest is going to show how to unleash the party planner in you and make it easy and fun at the same time. She'll show how to make invitations, envelopes, cupcake liners, favor tubes, and much more. All of these items can be made in very little time and they're a great way to use up scraps you have left over from previous projects. And finally, we'll learn about the many nutritional benefits of consuming fresh and dried figs. And did you know that ounce for ounce, figs provide a nutritional punch that's hard to match by any other fruit? All of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at enmu.edu. I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook, 
just go to facebook.com and in the search window, type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer you a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6900 series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this new booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Create Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or on any of the other booklets that we have available online. We also would like to invite you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just go to kenw.org and click on the sign up now button. Thank you.